Hello, my name is Autumn and welcome to Stellar Stories. Today we are going to talk about Shakespeare, both his knowledge of the stars and how he used them in his work. Scholars debate about how much Shakespeare actually knew about the astronomy of his time, but there are three main factors that come to mind. Number one, he was educated from a young age. Number two, he lived in London for most of his career. And number three, he was alive in the heart of the scientific revolution. This last fact is key because it shows that discoveries about astronomy were probably happening all around him. However, in an article for the Cosmos, writer Billy Condy points out, Given the tumultuous scientific events taking place around him, there are oddly few direct references to science in Shakespeare's plays. This is true. There aren't many references to science in Shakespeare's plays, and while I don't think that is sufficient evidence for ruling out Shakespeare's knowledge of the stars, it does limit our knowledge, and we may never know what Shakespeare was aware of. Regardless of how much Shakespeare actually knew about astronomy, we can still see him use celestial figures as symbols throughout his works. I was curious about this topic, so I did some digging and came up with a few common ideas in his use of stars as symbols. First, he uses the stars to show fate, and the most famous example of this is Romeo and Juliet, the star-crossed lovers. In the prologue of the play, Shakespeare wrote, From forth the fatal loins of these two foes, a pair of star-crossed lovers take their life. The phrase star-crossed lovers means that the stars were literally working against Romeo and Juliet's relationship from the very beginning. At this time, astrology was still the prevailing theory surrounding the stars, despite the leaps in astronomical discoveries. So not only was this a very poetical line, there's a good chance Shakespeare's audiences would have believed this idea of fate. Shakespeare takes this idea even further when Romeo says in Act 1, Scene 4, I fear too early, for my mind misgives some consequence yet hanging in the stars shall bitterly begin his fearful date with this night's revels, and expire the term of a despised life closed in my breast by some vile forfeit of untimely death. Here Shakespeare makes another important connection in astrology. Both stars and dreams were used to tell the future and the fate of a person. In this scene, Romeo mentions that he had a dream that told him that attending this feast would result in bad things happening. In this quote, Romeo is just about to enter the feast, but he first must state that he feels that fate may begin to act and this will result in death. The viewer knows, of course, that Romeo is unknowingly referring to the death of both himself and Juliet at the end of the play. But just because Shakespeare's audience was cool with accepting and obeying the stars doesn't mean his characters were. In Act 5, Scene 1, Romeo says, Is it so? Then I deny you, stars. Thou knowest my lodging. Give me ink and paper and hire post horses. I will hence tonight. Oh, Romeo. He sure tries to take matters into his own hands, but he forgets that that's just not how fate works. Both of the lovers die at the end, confirming that our fate rests in the stars. So in conclusion, we don't know if Shakespeare knew the science behind what he was writing about. And while it can be an interesting discussion, there's a very, very likely chance that we will never know the scope of his knowledge. What we do know is that Shakespeare used the stars as symbols to show fate and something beyond our world. And that is pretty magical. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed our discussion of Romeo and Juliet. Next episode, we will continue our discussion about Shakespeare by looking at Hamlet. I hope to see you there.